Good morning and welcome to The Art of Composition. Thanks for joining me today. I appreciate it. So I'm looking at some of the entries for the portrait contest from Lens Culture. And what I'm going to do is select a few of my favorites. I came across this photograph today. It's by David Corfield. He is from the United Kingdom. I love this photograph. And whenever I evaluate photography, I evaluate it in the same way I would a drawing and painting because when it comes to art, whether you're drawing, painting, or taking photographs, design still remains the same even though you don't approach it in the same way. Photography has a lot more limitations on it than a drawing and painting, but design is still important. So what I want to do is I want to drop the harmonic armature on this photograph and point out a few things that I think make the photograph strong. I try to evaluate work objectively. I don't get into this subjective stuff, what I feel about a certain work of art, because I don't think that you can evaluate art based on your feelings. There, Great art is objectively traceable. But let me just mention a few things that I like about this before I drop the harmonic armature on it. The first thing I like is I like how the face is positioned in the background. You have these lines that are coming down here and it fits nicely. The head fits nicely in this area right here. Okay, there's no real bad overlaps there. And I love the positioning of the arms and how it revolves around this area here as well. And then the subject is positioned somewhat loosely in the armature like that. But I like this vent here this it looks like a window vent or some type of of window here i think it balances out this area here you have a lot of elements on this left hand side and when i talk about balance in art and composition you need something on the other side to balance that out and you have this element here as well as this element on top so let me just drop the armature and i'll show you a few things that i think lock into place nicely and of course you can use the armature to evaluate your own work, and that's why I do this. I don't get into camera grids. They're not necessary, and I don't think photographers use them. But you can use a grid to evaluate your photographs to select the best one, for example, for a contest. This would be perfect, and you learn a lot by doing it. So let me get started. And like I said, I, I don't get into this camera grid thing. You can use them if you're just starting out and you want to learn how the armature works. But... Photography is not about camera grids, so, and, and you don't need camera grids to take amazing photographs. It's interesting because I was reading in the book, I think it was Classical Painting Atelier, or one of the art books, and they were talking about how the artist that draws and paints, they do a lot of preliminary sketches before they go to the canvas. Photography is the same way. Think about the photograph and the contact sheet, like drawing sketches. You're taking a lot of photographs and selecting the best one. The process is very similar, even though you're using a different tool. So when somebody comes back and says you need camera grids, that really doesn't make any sense. Now, of course, that's a personal choice. You can use them, but I think they inhibit creativity because if you understand what design is, you will realize that the photographer has an infinite amount of variety that they can choose when they're photographing their subject. So there's no way a design grid or a design pack could represent all the possibilities. That's why I think, that. well, that's why I don't offer elaborate grid packs because they don't make any sense. But like I said, you can use the harmonic armature to evaluate your work, and this is really important. I do this in my own photography. Let's say the photographer took 10 or 15 or 20, 25 of these photographs of the subject and he narrowed it down to a few. He could then lay the armature on the photograph to see how well things lock into place. It's important and it's a great tool to learn composition and it will improve your visual literacy skills in the long run. So let me just finish drawing this out and I'll point out a few things. All right, so... I have the grid drawn out. What I'm going to do is highlight in blue some of the elements that I think lock into place fairly nicely. And let me just change this to blue. 
All right, you have these loose verticals coming in here. And when I talk about design when it comes to painting, I'm always talking about locking the subject into place. And the photograph, the subject is loosely fit in this area here. Now, with the painting, it might be a little bit tighter. But you have this coming into play. You have a horizontal line right here. Okay, you can drive a vertical right here for the hand. So you have this coming on. And I'll bring this all the way over to there. And then I can drop this diagonal line here. It's following the path of the arm. Because remember, you can use the diagonal lines in the armature to create visual pathways. And you have a division right here where these two lines intersect, giving you this bottom of this statue here, this molding. You have a vertical right here where those diagonal lines intersect. So you're framing in this area right here. So you're creating this movement. You have this path down here and it's revolving around here. And you could loosely enclose it in here, although in a painting it would be a little bit tighter, but it's still very effective in this photograph. You have this movement coming around. You've locked your subject into place. You also have this vertical over here which stands out to me with this white frame because you have this white frame against this darker areas here. So that is a strong pull, but it's not as strong as here. And these for me are some of the strong elements that lock into place. And then you have another horizontal line right here. Okay, with the thumb. And then you could also drop a diagonal line here, which artists do when they're designing the work. So you have this enclosure here. Like I said, you have this pathway coming down and it revolves in this area here. I think it's beautiful. I think this is a fantastic photograph. I'm not going to go crazy with this because it is a photograph. But you can see how strong elements fall into the armature and how you can evaluate your work using the harmonic armature. But that's going to be it for today. Thanks for joining me. I appreciate it as always.